Hi everyone! Today we're going to do web automation using Selenium and Python. In this video, first we'll go over what web automation is and some use cases. Then we'll talk about Selenium and web drivers and how to install them. Then we'll do an interactive demo to code all of this in Python. As part of the automation, we'll open a web browser, fill out a form with a couple of questions, submit it, and verify that it went to the confirmation page. First, what is web automation? Web automation is basically making a computer do tasks that would be monotonous and repetitive if done manually. Automation replaces human work in repetitive, tedious tasks and minimizes the number of errors while also completing it super fast, way faster than humans could ever do. For example, when I was still doing e-learning during quarantine, every day I had to fill out seven Google Forms for attendance, each one for a class I had. If I had learned web automation at that time and automated that task, it would have saved me about 10 minutes every single day. There are a number of repetitive tasks that can be automated in the IT industry also. Regression testing is one important form of testing in which automation is done to retest previously successful test cases. Now let's talk about Selenium and WebDriver. Selenium is a framework that provides libraries for automation, and these libraries are most frequently used in Java and Python-based environments. WebDriver is a part of Selenium libraries in which you can access browsers and the contents of websites, such as filling out a form, clicking a button, etc. Now let's talk about the installations you'll need to make in order to start doing web automation. Selenium installation is fairly easy, as you only need a pip install it. But based on your Python version or access levels, you might need to pip3 or sudo pip install it. The next thing you'll need to install is ChromeDriver. I'm using the Chrome browser, so I'm going to install ChromeDriver. And for different browsers and different operating systems, the commands are different. But for Mac operating system, you'll need to use this cask brew command. And for Windows, you should use Chocolatey, a great package manager for Windows. Alright, let's get to the demo. So what I want to do is first fill out a Google form using Python script. So I'll go to Adam for editing. And the first thing I want to do is import WebDriver from Selenium. So I'll say from Selenium import WebDriver. And obviously you'll need to install both of these. We talked about that in the presentation. And I already pre-made a Python file here, automation.py. And if you want a more in-depth video on Python, I'll put a link in the description for my Python basics video. And the next thing I want to do is show you my pre-made form. I just replicated my e-learning attendance form, and here it is. We'll talk more about this attendance form later. But now what I want to do is copy this URL. So I copied it, and I'll go back to Adam. And now I'll make a variable, I'll call it web. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm just calling it web. And then for the value, I'll say webdriver.chrome. Oh wait, zchrome.chrome. And since that's a function, I'll add parentheses. What this does is it tells Python that, hey, I'm gonna use the Chrome browser. So whenever I run it, it'll just open up a Chrome browser instead of any other browser. But this only tells us that, hey, we're using a Chrome browser. Now I want to actually open up a URL. So I'll say web.get because I'm using a get request. And then in parentheses and quotes, we'll paste our Google Form URL here. And then there's the long URL. But now if we run this program, I'll save it first. Now if we run this program, it should open up our form for us. So let me go to terminal to run that. And I'll say... Python automation.py dot pi. All right, it's running. And it opened up, and as you can see, it opened up our form. And it also says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software, which is correct because we didn't open this up, but our program did. Nice. Now we want to fill out the different fields of our form. So I'll go back to Adam for coding. And I'll make another variable. I'll call this last name, not lats, last name. This is because the first question of our form is the last name. So I'll just call this last name. And for the value, I'll make it a string and I'll add my last name, Katimani. 
And now we want to add another variable. I'll just call this last. And for the value, I'll say web dot find element by xpath by x path. And with the x path, we can differentiate between the different elements on the web page. That's why I'm using the x path. So now, since this is a function, we'll obviously need parentheses. And first, I'll save this. And I'll go back to my Google form. And now I'll go to developer tools. How to do that is you have to press these three dots, then more tools, and then developer tools. Or you can do command shift C. And I'm going to click this, which is selecting an element anywhere on the web page. And I want to select the element of the text box here. And if I click it, then it shows us the HTML. And I'm going to right click it and say copy, then say copy XPath. That will copy the XPath of our text box here. So I'll go to Adam and then paste it here. This is the XPath of our element. So it's just telling Python that, hey, I'm going to store the XPath of this element into the variable last. Now, what we want to do is type into that element. So on the next line, I'll just say last dot send underscore keys. What that'll do is it'll go into the last text box and then it'll send whatever keys we want it to. So I'll just say uh, last name because we already stored that in a variable. And if we run it, it should fill out the first field of the form. So I'll go to terminal and I'll run the same code. And it opened it up. And oh, it gives us this weird error. This is happening because we're trying to access the HTML controls, which in this case is the text box, while the browser is still trying to render it. If we wait for a second or two for the browser to load and render this HTML completely, then we could avoid this error. So how are we going to do that is, I'm going to go back to Adam. Along with WebDriver, I'm going to import time. And then after we're loading our URL, then I'm going to say time.sleep for two seconds. What this will do is just wait for two seconds. So it'll give it a bit of time for the URL to render. So if we save this and run it, then it should work. Python automation. And it opened it up. And it filled out the form. Nice. It works for one field, but I want to make it work for all the fields, all the questions. So I'll go back to Adam, and now I'll just copy whatever I did here, and I'll paste it right here. So instead of last name, I'll do the next question, which is first name. So first name, and then I'll say first instead of last. First, okay. And instead of my last name, I'll say my first name, Rishabh. And then here I'll say first name instead of last name. First, okay. And this XPath isn't the same for both of them, so I'll take this out and add in the new XPath. So I'll go to Chrome. Where is it? Okay, Chrome. And I'll go to my attendance form. Now I'll go back to developer tools and I'll take the XPath of our second question. So I'll right click it, copy, and then copy XPath. Now we'll go back to Adam and paste it here. So now we have the XPath of both of them. And it now it should fill out two fields of the form. So let me test that by going to terminal and then running our code. Okay, it rendered. It'll take two seconds. And as you can see, it filled out both fields, nice. Now we want it to fill out the third field, which is a multiple choice question. I'll need to get the X path of whatever answer we want the period question to be. So I'll go to developer tools right here. And let's say I'm in period two, so I would want the answer to be two. So I'll just select this circle. And as you can see, it's a div. So I'll copy the X path, not the full X path. I'll copy the X path of it. And now let's go back to Adam. So I'll just copy this line because we don't need anything else. And then I'll paste it. Instead of first, I'll call it 
radio period, or no, I'll call it radio button period, and then web dot find element by xpath. Here we can paste our xpath here. Oh wait, no, sorry, that pasted wrong thing. I'll just copy this again. That's okay. Copy the xpath, and then here. Okay, now in the next line, let me go to the end. Now in the next line, since it selected the choice we wanted it to, now we want it to click that. So I'll just say radio button period dot click. Period dot click. And then since that's a function parentheses, what this will do is it'll select the choice we wanted to in the multiple choice question, and then it'll click. So now it should fill out all the fields. So if we run it, I'll go to terminal and run our program. Then it opened it up. It takes two seconds, and it filled out all the fields. Cool. Now we want it to press the submit button. So I'll go to developer tools again and I'll just take the xpath of the submit button. And then it's a span, so we'll just say copy, and then copy the xpath. And now we'll go back to Adam. And then we can just, uh, never mind. I'll paste this here. And then we can copy this, paste it there, and then we can take the xpath and replace it with the multiple choice questions xpath. All right, so, Instead of calling it radio button period, I'll call it submit, and then submit.click. What this will do is open up our web browser, fill out all the fields of our form, and then press the submit button. So now let's save it and run it. All right, I'll go to terminal and run it. It opened it up, and it takes two seconds. Okay, and it's submitted, cool. Since we submitted a form, it says thank you for attending. And as part of all automated testing conclusions, we should validate if the form was successfully submitted. So to do that, I'll go to developer tools on this same page and I'll click this thank you for attending. Nope, I'll click this thank you for attending text. It's a div, so I'll just say edit as HTML and then take the class. So it says Freebird form viewer view response confirmation message. So I'll just copy that and now go back to Adam. So now what I'm gonna do is make a variable and I'll call that get confirmation confirmation text or div text because it's in a div. I'll just say div text, and then for the value of that, we will say web dot find element by CSS selector in this not xpath but CSS selector selector, and then since it's a function, we'll use parentheses, and then inside of that we'll write dot and then we'll paste our class. That's the CSS selector. So now on the next line, we just added that thank you for attending text into a variable. So now in the next line, just to test, we'll just say print and then that variable. So get a confirmation div text. So I'll just say that get underscore confirmation div text. And then now we want to write an if command saying that if the confirmation text is thank you for attending, then we can say that, hey, this is successful, which is the whole point for validation. So we'll just add a parentheses here and say, if the get confirmation div text, if that is equal to a string saying thank you for attending, you, oh wait, I don't know if it's capitalized or anything. Let me check. It says, thank you for attending. Let me just copy this for simplicity. I'll go back to Adam and I'll paste it here. 
This if command is saying, if the confirmation div text is thank you for attending, then it should do something. So now let's write what it should do. We'll just say print and then test was successful. Successful. Okay. And now let's say it wasn't successful. So then we can just say print uh, test was not successful. Okay, now if we save this and run it. Oh wait, I forgot something. It shouldn't just be the variable. It should be get confirmation div text dot text because we want to get the text from that variable, not just the variable. Same thing for here, but not defining the variable, obviously. And let me put a space here. Let's save it. And now it should work correctly. I'll go to, wait, let me clear this. Okay. Let me run our program. And it opened it up. It's taking two seconds and it filled out. It says, thank you for attending here. And it, and it says, thank you for attending and test was successful. Yay. That was about web automation in Python. I'm going to make more web automation and web scraping videos on the future. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks very much for watching. If you all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any web automation questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.